So the pelvic floor is a group of muscles that sit in the lower pelvis. They aid in urination, defecation, and sexual function, and they also help to support the pelvis, the hips, and the low back. So sometimes patients can come to me with issues where their pelvic floor is weak. So these patients may complain of leakage of, say, their urine when they cough, laugh, sneeze, jump, or exercise. Some other people may have a more upregulated pelvic floor that's kind of overactive. And those people may be complaining of issues with pain. So they may have pain in the pelvic region or pain with intercourse or even pain with just sitting for too long, standing for too long, or any activity that they do throughout their day. My first goal with any patient is to make them feel comfortable. Um, I know that we're gonna be talking about things that may be a little embarrassing for them, but I always let them know that there are a lot of people out here that have these problems, and that's a common misconception that they're the only person dealing with this. So I try to make sure that they know that they're not alone and that I'm not embarrassed about what they're talking about. I hear it all the time and that I'm here to help them. So my first goal is always that my patient is comfortable and that we've established a relationship of trust. So a lot of people will ask if they're the only person that leaks when they cough or laugh or they'll also say that they think it's normal because on TV there are a lot of commercials that have normalized incontinence or some people will say, you know, I've had four kids, I just thought it was normal that I would have pain with intercourse or that I would have leakage. But that's actually not true and we're here to kind of give them some more information and help them get their life back. So the first thing I'll do will be very similar to anybody that comes in with, say, low back pain. Because the pelvic floor muscles sit within the pelvis, I'm gonna look at the alignment of their pelvis, I'm gonna look at the alignment of their spine, and I'm also gonna look at the strength of their core, their hip girdle muscles, and then also how they breathe, because there's a close relationship between the pelvic floor and the muscles that you use to breathe. From there, I will also typically request that I do a pelvic exam. The reason for that is that the pelvic floor muscles are located within the pelvis, and that's the best way for me to find out what's going on with them. However, if the patient does not want me to perform an internal exam, that's not a problem. I have other techniques that I can utilize as well. So usually I'm gonna cater a program to the specific needs of the patient. So depending on what I found with their alignment, I may do some corrections to that. I may do some soft tissue work or massage type techniques to those muscles. I may also work on some strengthening. So I may have the patient do exercises where they are coordinating their pelvic floor muscles with their core muscles, with their breathing patterns. And then there's also something called biofeedback, which we can utilize in which an electrode is inserted into the vagina or rectum, and then that gives a readout onto a computer as to what the muscles are doing. And then I can use that to help the patient either strengthen or also learn how to relax those muscles. One of my favorite patients that I ever worked with was a 45-year-old man. He had had prostate surgery and was left severely incontinent. He was very active. He was a construction worker, so he had to climb up and down ladders. He had to lift heavy materials. And he was very embarrassed because he was going through eight to 10 incontinence pads a day. He had to carry a bag around with him. He was constantly taking breaks throughout his day. And the people that he worked with knew what was going on because he was constantly having to take breaks to change his pads. So after we had worked together for a few months, he got to the point where he no longer really needed any incontinence pads. So he could go up and down ladders, he could swing his hammer, he could carry big boards around, and he didn't have any leakage. It really made a huge impact in his life because he could go back to doing what he loved without the embarrassment of everybody knowing that he had incontinence. Another one of my favorite patients was a young woman who had had a severe tear with the birth of her third child, and it left her in a lot of pain. So she had a lot of scarring through the vaginal area and she was unable to engage in intercourse with her husband, which was impacting her marriage. And after working with me for a few weeks, she had gotten to the point where she no longer had pain, was sitting while she was nursing her child. She was able to be intimate with her husband again. And it also just really had a great impact on her relationship and her self-confidence and, and her life. I just love that I get the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. These issues that people come to me with are issues that they're afraid to talk about 
their things that they're embarrassed about. They think they're alone. And so to be a listening ear and to be a guiding voice to let them know that they're not alone and they don't have to live with these problems and that there are things that we can do is incredibly rewarding. To be able to impact their life on such a personal level is, is makes it even that more rewarding because you know that you're not just you know, taking away pain, you're changing their life.